And we are on the air. Hello, friends. Welcome to Code Mentor Office Hours. Uh, we have another exciting episode today, uh, sort of continuing our JavaScript framework series. Uh, we've been having a whole month and have another really couple months. It's sort of like a, a whole uh, three-month period of JavaScript-centric uh, talks. And today, we're really excited to have uh, Marco Atwit joining us. Um, and uh, Marco is the author of Ember Simple Auth and owner of Simple Labs, which is an engineering and consulting agency uh, over in Munich, Germany. Uh, he has experience with several different companies as an engineer. He previously worked with uh, Experteer, Scoreloop AG. Um, he studied at Munich University. We got a degree in CompSci. And he's joining us today to give us an overview of how Ember Simple Auth works. Uh, he's going to give us an example using the app in action and uh, answer any questions you guys have. So um, for anyone who might be joining, looks like we have a few more people joining now. I'm sure we'll... Um, more people will be joining. Feel free to throw any questions into the group chat window, or if you're watching the asynchronous live broadcast, um, you can use a QA and a app, and I'll be monitoring the questions uh, this whole time. Um, so without further ado, kick it over to uh, Marco. Yeah, hi, guys. It's nice to see so many people are interested in the library. Um, I will start right away with uh, some slides I prepared. Uh, let me set up screen sharing. It's, um, okay, and um, now you should see my slides, right? Looks good. Okay, good. Uh, so I'm giving you a quick introduction now, and then I'm going to show an example, and then we can we can. Uh, have some questions and discussions uh, around the library. Um, so, Ember Simple Auth is, like Marco already said, uh, it's maintained by Simplabs. We're in uh, Munich, Germany. And it's an authentication authorization library for Ember.js. Uh, as far as I know, right now it's kind of the most popular uh, library out there. Um, and what it does is basically three things where the most important thing is that it maintains a session. Because um, like in the in the context of traditional uh, web applications, you always have that server-side session. For example, in Rails app, you have the server session and then the, the session cookie that kind of uh, persists that session, uh, and you don't have that in Ember applications, but um, you need to have it so you know whether the session is authenticated or not. So uh, the library maintains that, that client-side session inside of your Ember app, and uh, that session is, for example, available in all templates then. So you could do things like, say, if session is authenticated, then you should log out link. If it's not authenticated, then you show uh, 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 then you show the link to the login page, um, and it's also accessible in all routes, controllers, and components. So that, for example, in a controller or probably better component, uh, I think that example code is not so great. It should actually be a component, probably. Uh, you can authenticate the session. We'll see how that works exactly later, but you can just say this gets session because it's being injected um, automatically by the library. Um, and also the session is synced between tabs and windows so that, for example, if you, if you have two tabs of the same application open and you are logged in in both, and then you log, in, uh, you log out in the one tab, then, because that's a that the the application is an is an it's a, a, a client side application that would mean that in the second tab you you still have all the data there memory so it's still accessible for people who know how to access it but it's actually quite simple to access it but of course you would expect that as soon as you log out of the application, that data is protected. Um, so that's why the library main, uh, uh, syncs the session state between tabs and windows, 
And I prepared a quick video to show you how that works because I thought that would be simple. So I log in here. I'm in that one tab. I'm also logged in here in the other tab. Then I log out. And you see I'm logged out in both tabs. And now I log in again. And you see I'm logged in in both tabs, log out again, and logged out in both tabs. So um, yeah, that's basically uh, basically a security uh, feature where you make sure that as soon as you log out, then all the tabs are logged out. And by default, simple auth will reload the page so that all in-memory data gets gets gets. Uh, uh, gets destroyed and nothing is is maintained in the other tabs or windows that people would then be able to access, although they shouldn't be allowed because you have logged out already. Um, uh, 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 then, of course, the second thing that the library does is, besides maintaining that session, it offers mechanisms to actually authenticate that session. And it can be authenticated in basically any way that's suitable for your application. Uh, so for example, uh, and you do that by choosing from a set of authentication strategies, basically a strategies based implementation. So you just say you want to authenticate and provide a strategy that you want to use to do the actual authentication work. Uh, for example, that can be OAuth2, or specifically one specific grant type out of that um, specification uh, that basically works like that. So see how you specify the authenticator there, and then this get session authenticate call. You say you want to authenticate the session with the simple auth authenticator auth2 password grant. That's that grant that. Um, and the simple auth implements the auth2 um, password grant is basically a very simple grant. It's basically just a specification of sending a user identification and password to the server, and then in return, the server would um, respond with an access token if, um, if those credentials are valid. Uh, there is an authenticator for device for the popular Rails uh, authentication gem. Uh, it works more or less the same way, but instead of uh, saying you want to authenticate the session with that auth2 authenticator, you're saying you're using the simple auth authenticator device authenticator. And uh, there is also a authenticator for Tori, that um, library for interfacing with, ex with external authentication providers like Facebook and uh, Google Plus, for example. Um, it works more or less the same way, but instead of specifying credentials, you're saying uh, you're specifying the Tori provider that you want to use, and that will then open a new window. In that case, it would be a Facebook window where you enter your Facebook credentials, and it would, um, uh, if those are valid, then it returns. And it's the same mechanism from 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 your perspective, although it works totally different because it opens a window and the or two and device strategies, for example, they just send requests directly to your server. Um, but like from a session perspective, it's basically the same mechanism. Uh, and there are many more. It's very simple to implement your own um, authenticator. There's a very simple API for that. You basically just need to implement three methods. And uh, all the information um, you need for that is in the readme, and there are several uh, blog posts in the web. Uh, where you can find detailed instructions for uh, how to implement your own authenticator mechanism. Um, so besides authentication, there's also authorization. Um, just, just to 
I repeat the two uh, terms maybe. Authentication is where you ensure that the user is who he pretends to be, and authorization is where you determine whether the user is allowed to do something that he uh, requests to do. So in the context of an MJS application, authentication is logging in, and authorization is adding something to the request you make to the API server, if uh, you have one. If you don't have one, of course, you don't have authorization, because it's the application is self-contained. Um, but in the case that you have an API server, you need to add something to your outgoing requests that the API can then use to determine whether the, the request is actually allowed or not. Uh, so that's authorization. Um, yeah, so the library authorizes uh, requests. Uh, and that, again, is um, implemented via strategies. So you can choose from uh, 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 you can choose from that set of strategies and pick one that makes sense for your application. So there is, for example, Auth2 again, uh, specifically Barra tokens, where it just adds a Barra token header to outgoing uh, requests using that same header that has previously been acquired by the authenticator. Uh, there's one for device, it uses the author authorization header as well, um, but just uh, the request uh, payload looks a bit different. Um, and there's a simple way to uh, implement your own authorizers as well. So you don't have to use the authorization header. It's just, it's just a very simple choice to make to use that, uh, because that's what it's made for, of course. But you could, uh, you could, do anything you like or uh, that makes sense. Um, so that's the three things for now. You have the session, you authenticate the session, and when the session, and when the session is authenticated, um, you use the authentication uh, information to authorize outgoing requests. But of course, during the lifetime of the session, you have a number of, of events that happen. So, for example, uh, that could be session authentication succeeded, so maybe your application wants to respond to the event that someone successfully logs in, uh, or a session authentication failed, uh, where you maybe display something if, if authentication fails, or uh, that's actually maybe more interesting, uh, the authorization failed event. So that's being raised when a request fails and the API returns a 401 error, which means that uh, you're, not, you're not authorized to make certain requests. So by default, in that case, and a simple auth would invalidate the session and effectively lock the user out because uh, the assumption is that when a 401 error happens that the session somehow has expired. Um, and then as a convenience measure, um, the, the uh, library defines a set of mixins that make your life a little easier using all these things like session, session events, authenticators. Um, so, for example, there is that application route mixing that will uh, convert all of these session events into actions um, that, are, that are then handled automatically via the application route mixing in the application route. Um, then there's the uh, convenience mix-in for making a route authenticated so that it is only accessible when the session is authenticated. That's the uh, authenticated route mix-in. 
um, basically that checks in the routes before uh, model hook if the session is authenticated and if not it, it just redirects to the configured login route. Uh, there's also the unauthenticated route mixin, which makes sure that the session can only be accessed when the session is not authenticated. So that's uh, useful uh, for the login route, for example, where you don't want people to visit that route if they are already authenticated, because there's nothing they could do there. And it, uh, I think by default it just redirects to the index page. Uh, and now I've prepared a quick demo. Um, I have that here. Let me make that full screen, maybe a little larger. So that's basically the same thing that we saw in that short movie, where I can log in, and then when, if I'm logged in, I can visit that protected page. If I log out, I go back to the start page. If I'm not Logged in right now. You see, I'm seeing that login button here, and I try to access the login route. Then I'm redirected to the login route, and as soon as I uh, log in, then that's this the previously aborted transition to the protected route is then retried, and of course that it works because now the session is authenticated. I wanted to quickly show the code for that simple example, uh, just so you get an idea how that stuff works. So uh, this is a really simple application. It's a one-page application. It uses the, the globalized distribution of simple auth, which uh, exports that simple auth global. Of course, that's not a real life example. I mean, in real life, you would use Embassy Lie, or you would hopefully use Embassy Lie, but uh, still, you get the uh, uh, you get the the, the um, basic concepts. Um, so the application layout uh, is really simple. You have the home link. You have the link to the protected page, uh, and then depending on whether the session is authenticated, you either see a button uh, which triggers the invalidate session action, or if it's not authenticated, you see the login link here, which goes to the login route. Uh, and then it has the outlet and link back. And that's not so interesting for now. Uh, index page just. Uh, Unless the session is authenticated, it shows a link and like, saying how to log in. And then the login uh, page just shows the inputs for ident identification and password. And it triggers the authenticate action when the form is submitted. And, and then the protected page just says, hey, I'm protected. Uh, so the application is really simple. Uh, let's ignore this for the moment. That's really specific to the Earth 2 thing. Um, OK, so here we define the routes. We have a login route and a protected route. We have the application route, which uses the application route mixin. As I showed earlier, it also defines the invalidate session action that we saw in the template above, like here, if the session is authenticated, we display that uh, link, and that raises the invalidate session action. And the implementation is really simple. You just get the session and call the session's invalidate method, and that will invalidate the session, and the user is logged out. Uh, then we have the login controller. And as we saw above in the login template, the, um, the login form, if that's submitted, it was the authenticate action. And that's implemented here in the, in the login controller. We get the credentials here, like uh, the values for, it, for it, the values for identification and 
password input, and then we call the sessions authenticate method with that auth2 authenticator, pass the credentials, and that's it. And then we uh, have the protected route, and like you saw, as long as the session is not authenticated, that's not accessible, so that's just done by mixing in that authenticated route mix in, and also when the session is authenticated, I should not be able to access the login route, and for that we simply uh, mix in the unauthenticated route mix in into the uh, login route. And uh, yeah, that's basically all I have prepared for now, so maybe we can have some Q&A now. Oh. Sure. Uh, yeah, that was, that was great. Thanks, Marco. Um, so yeah, we have a few questions that have come in. Um, actually, Ashraf just sent a question in a few minutes ago. Um, he was mentioning, um, if we have role management in our application, should we handle role authorization through simple auth authorization, or should the two not be mixed? Um, I mean, role management, basically that two parts to role management. I would say first you have the, uh, the UI part where you don't display certain things for, for certain people, which of course should be, uh, should be client side. And I would probably just attach something to the session. And then in the templates, uh, maybe I'm going to share the screen again. Uh, then I think in the, in the, Templates you could just instead of of uh, this for example you uh, you could just say if session uh, may see something or so or is allowed to do something you would show something or not and uh, the the role management that's about making sure that people are allowed to do something or not. Uh, I think that's something that has to happen on the server. Anyway, because the on the uh, the client you don't really have any 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 actions going on that that really change data or so, and also you have no way of 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 making of securely implementing something that that makes sure that the user isn't able uh, to do something right because it's all JavaScript, like you can look into the code, you can change it. Um, so that has to happen on the server side, and that's basically you, you, you just have the incoming request that contains the uh, user's token, uh, and then that's enough information to, to figure out on the server side you, uh, whether the user is allowed to do something that he's trying to do. Gotcha, cool. Um, Ashraf, uh, you know, just uh, send us a chat if that answered your question, hopefully. Yeah, okay. that was helpful, he said. Um, so I'm going to look at, feel free, guys, to keep throwing questions into the chat. I'm going to go to some questions that were emailed in. Um, I have a, a batch of like three or four that a few people asked about. So a few people were asking about comparisons to Tori. I don't know if you're, if you're familiar or have thoughts on Tori. Um, but, uh, I mean, to start off, maybe... Um, some people wanted to know how would you know how would they use Tori with Simple Auth? Is that possible? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. And I think uh, it's like the 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 the, the um, it, it's not that 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 Simple Auth and Tori could not exist side by side because Simple Auth is more about uh, maintaining that session and handling all these session events and building that. And providing that framework for for in for authenticating the session with a uh, authenticator strategy and authorizing requests and Tori is more about really interfacing with these external authentication providers, right? So that's really two things. And I would say that Tori is more about um, is more about uh, uh, sorry, I, I forgot what well, I uh, wanted to say, uh, but I'm just going to show a quick example. Um, so, and by the way, all the examples uh, that I'm showing are inside SimpleAuth uh, repo on GitHub. 
So feel free to just browse around and you can run Grunt server from the project's root and that will run that server then where, uh, where you can add localhost. Uh, sorry, you're not seeing that, but I think I shared the wrong thing. Let me just Uh, let me just change that. I think I have to, have to share on the whole screen. Okay. Uh, so you can run Grunt Server then, and that will start the server where at localhost 8000 examples you can uh, see all these examples. So, for example, the last one is the Tori example where uh, Looks the same, protected page, realize to login. And um, this is now where Tori comes into play. When I authenticate the session, then Tori opens that Facebook dialog. And as soon as I log in, ah, which didn't work, <laughs> maybe it works here. Uh, so as soon as I log in, then I'm logged in. And what, what, how that works is that Tori is just used as an authenticator here, and uh, uh, like I showed on on the slides, um, in this case I'm just saying I want to authenticate the session with the Tori authenticator, and want to use the Facebook Auth tool provider for that, and that provider is the, the, uh, the Tori provider. So uh, in that case, SimpleAuth grabs the Tori mechanism for interacting with, um, with Facebook in that case in a SimpleAuth authenticator. So that's usually uh, how you would, uh, you would um, use the two uh, together. Cool. Um, Follow-up question on that. Um, Tori has session management um, that uh, that Ashraf's not that's not he's not using that actually uh, rather than rather he's leveraging simple off sessions management. So in that case, uh, Tori's only managing the communication with third with third party. Correct? Does that make sense? Yes. 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 Cool. Um, Awesome. Um, yeah, guys, keep keep throwing questions in. This is great. Uh, I'll go to another one that was sent in. Um, you talked about this a little bit. It's more people are curious about comparing the two tools. Do you, can you think of a specific advantage of using Simple Auth uh, OAuth two over over Tori's OAuth two? Uh, I mean, the the uh, Simple Auth OAuth two mechanism is the. Um, uh, let's look it up. I'm, I'm not sure what the name is. It's the um, resource owner password credentials grant type. So that's uh, really just a formalization of the process where you send a username and a password to the server, and in return you get an uh, access token. Of course, that's not the auth two flow that Tori implements for Facebook. Because they are implementing that that flow where you have redirects and stuff, so that's why they open a new window, and, and as soon as as that 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 redirects happens, they using uh, they're using post message to to notify the the actual application that the login was successful. Uh, so that's a very complicated thing, right? So, so, so it's a very nice to have Tori do that for you. But you uh, really cannot compare uh, the that 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 resource owner grant time with uh, one that Tori implements. It's a really two di two different things. So, if if you would want to implement Facebook authentication with uh, simple auth and, you, and not use Tori for that, uh, you would probably use something like the Facebook SDK or so, instead of building that whole thing on. 
Gotcha. Um, so I have a question that hopefully it's not too naive, but you know, we so we've been talking to a lot of different JavaScript experts who do Backbone or Ember or React, and I'm curious, you know, what were the variables that made you choose Ember as the platform to to build this off of? Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't really that I chose Ember to build uh, simple auth on top of that, but it was more that I chose Ember and then I more or less had to build simple auth on top of that because it was really in early stage of the framework and like no authentication libraries existed or the ones that were there I didn't really like so much because it was, uh, so it was really like more that I had to build that but what made me choose Ember instead of Backbone or Angular or something is uh, it's probably the fact that I have been doing Rails for I don't know seven eight years or so, and if you look at Ember and come from a Rails background, then you think it's more or less the same thing. It just runs in the browser, but still it's got uh, very familiar concepts, a very familiar structure. So uh, it's just a very smooth transition. Okay. And cool. then the fact that you have all that, all, all that 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 enforced structure and clear ways of how to do things. I, uh, I mean, um, um, when you do raids for a lot of time, you really uh, get to appreciate that. And, yeah. Awesome. Um, uh, so another question that was emailed in. Um, you know, maybe you could talk a little, kind of broadly about um, you know how do you think about fetching user data from third parties via via the backend? Um, you know, a lot of people uh, I think have security concerns and and for you know compliance reasons want to make sure they're doing that correctly. Um, obviously, Simple Office has had to deal with that. Can you can you talk about sort of how you think about that workflow? Uh, I'm not 100% sure I, I get the question. Um, I, maybe I'll, I'd be better if I, re I read it verbatim. But basically, someone wrote in, um, I understand that I should always try to fetch user data from third party via my back end for various security concerns, but also sometimes for compliance reasons. Uh, would be nice if such scenarios can be outlined or my understanding confirmed even in broad terms. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? We can, we can skip it if it doesn't make sense. Um, I... I mean, usually, uh, if 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 you if, if you build a Facebook login on your page, so for example, you have that page that I showed earlier where you use Tori for um, for uh, 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 for login in with uh, uh, Facebook, and in return you get that token from Facebook. Then what you want to do usually because you um, you don't want to use that token for requests against your own API. Uh, you would usually exchange that token you receive from Facebook against a, for example, bearer token for for your own API. Uh, so that's also where you verify the Facebook token on the server side, and uh, where you would then maybe also fetch some user data from Facebook and store that locally in your database. So I hope that kind of explains the flow. Yeah, I think I think it does. People are definitely curious in, in the context of Facebook. That's that's definitely where people are thinking yeah. of using it. Yeah. Um, cool. Th that's all the the questions that we were emailed in. Um, you know, what do you recommend for people getting start who want to get started uh, using the tool? Um, I imagine you have a lot of documentation on GitHub about it, but what's a good starting point? Um, yeah, there's a very extensive README that took me a lot of time to write it. <laughs> um, so I think the best way to start is to just use that OAuth 2 flow because that really works great out of the box and there's a lot of middleware available for various service uh, server stacks, so, so definitely for Rails, for PHP, for Java, like there's hundreds of, of uh, middlewares usable on the server side, so that's really 
the solution that works with most existing applications. Um, and then you, yeah, there's a step-by-step -step guide more or less in the README uh, for how to set the framework up. Um, there are also some videos on YouTube, I guess. There should be at least two talks I gave at the, the Munich uh, meetup. Um, should be on YouTube. You will find various blog posts uh, on how to on how to uh, set a project up with simple auth. And then, of course, there are all these examples. And for all of these examples, uh, let me enable screen sharing again. All of these examples use um, the middleware JS that's also in the examples folder in the repository. And uh, that implements all of the endpoints. It's of course, just a more or less fake implementation, where it just, uh, for example, here it just says, okay, if, if the uh, uh, credentials are so and so, then it just returns a static response. Um, but I think that really helps to understand the the flow from client side to server side back. Yeah. Cool. Um, Ashraf just jumped in with one more sort of clarification. Maybe you can look at it in the group chat. Um, just to recap your question, uh, exchange the access token for a bearer on the back end and go from there? Um, uh, yes, yes, yes. So, um, I mean, usually if you have Facebook authentication, you usually also have Google Plus authentication and maybe more providers, maybe LinkedIn, whatever. And uh, of course, if you have maybe three external providers, you would uh, you would receive uh, three different tokens from them. So um, you would have to store um, all of these tokens uh, in your user record on the server side to make sure that you can actually identify the user when you have an incoming uh, request with uh, one of these tokens. So, uh, and yeah, that's not really nice. So you want to have uh, one authorization mechanism that, that, that that's used for, for all of the incoming requests. So that's why you would, would, as soon as you receive, for example, that Facebook token, send that to your server, uh, validate it, um, and then then return a bearer token that that is like the one and only uh, token you use for authenticating that user or for for identifying that user in API request. So that's uh, more or less for streamlining your 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 your, your uh, client server interaction. Awesome. I'm I'm just curious. Do you um do you have a record of all the different projects that have taken advantage of this tool that have that have implemented it? Uh, not really. That, that's something that I wanted to do. Like maybe prepare a list or so. Uh, I know that Ghost, uh, the blogging platform, uses nice. uh, some cloth. We had a very long-running bug where we couldn't figure something out, but then eventually it resolved, and I think now it's... I think it's being used productive already in production. Um, wow. I guess I'm actually not aware of other big projects, but there probably are. So it would be nice if people would let me know, like mm -hmm. on, on uh, 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 Twitter or something. It would be really nice to have a list, maybe on the. Yeah, I guess all you pr pretty get pretty much get notifications about are when people fork it on GitHub, but you don't know ultimately how they're using it, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. But I think they're about. Uh, 170 forks or so, so I'm not really keeping track of that. That's great, though. Um, awesome. Well, um, where should people follow more about what you're doing and, and your work? Um, do you have a blog? Uh, yeah, we have the Simple Apps blog. There's not much going on to 
honest, then we, uh, I have my personal Twitter account, we have a company account as well. Um, I hope there will be more stuff uh, in the future. So, like I said, for now it's kind of silent still, but we try to improve that. Gotcha. Um, awesome. Well, Marco, thank you so much for your, for your time today. Um, for everybody watching live, thank you for being here, and for anyone watching uh, the recording of this, um, we'll uh, we'll have links to um, to Ember Simple Off on, on GitHub and to all, all of uh, Marco's work. And uh, feel free to always uh, take advantage of Code Mentor if you're ever having any technical trouble implementing um, any systems like this. Uh, we have a lot of amazing experts, um, including Marco, uh, listed on there. Um, so. So uh, yeah, and also feel free to uh, check out future office hours. We like I said, we're doing a great JavaScript framework series, so we're going to have a whole string of more JavaScript experts. Um, but hopefully, uh, this was helpful for everyone. And um, Marco, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, well, I'll see everyone uh, next time. Going to wrap up the broadcast uh, right now. Thanks so much for all the questions. All right.